Now, the future of the British Vault Gigafactory in Northumberland is in jeopardy once again. This as their Australian buyer, Recharge Industries, misses its deadline for paying up. This comes as the former boss of the Gigafactory criticises the government's electric vehicle strategy, saying it lacks innovative thinking and a joined-up industrial strategy. Well, GB News' economics and business editor Liam Halligan joins us now with On The Money. Liam, wasn't this Gigafactory supposed to be saved? (laughs) So, look, Gigafactories, what are they? They are the factories where they make the batteries for electric vehicles or EVs. And the notion is that unless we build the the, the batteries in this country, we're not going to build the cars in this country because the batteries are very, very heavy, expensive to transport. So where you build the batteries is where you end up building the cars. So... Gigafactories are seen as absolutely vital to the future of the British car making industry, which still employs obviously tens of thousands of people, one of our biggest export sectors, massively important to the Midlands, to the northeast and other parts of the country. And I actually went up to uh, Blythe, the port of Blythe in Northumberland. And just inland from Blythe is the small town of Camis. We're seeing here some shots of that site in Camis. It's seen as absolutely perfect for a gigafactory. You've got car making in the northeast, obviously. You've got generations of people who live in that part of the country who are mechanically very adept. You've got the deep water port of Blythe. You see here the computer generated images. And it was meant to be all tickety boo, all happening. The government put up a couple of hundred million quid in a grant for as long as the private sector matched that investment. But it's been really hard to get the private sector to actually match that investment. Let's have a look at some of the little details here. So the British Volt Gigafactory, it was planned as a a £3.8 billion plant. It was going to be our biggest gigafactory. We've only got one gigafactory at the moment in the UK, by the way. It was to be built in Camus near Blythe in Northumberland, uh, as I said. It actually went into administration in January, Mm -hmm. but then there was a white knight in the form of the Australian firm Recharge, which was going to invest in the site, buying it from the administrators EY. But Recharge have reportedly missed their payment deadline. Now, EY tell us that the deal is still on. But in the middle of all this, as the government seems to be moving away from some of its green pledges, a lot of people who have been trying to raise money in this sector Mm. are starting to lash out at number 10. And here we have uh, Orai Najeri. He was the founder and the former CEO of British Vault. And this is what he said to the papers overnight. British Vault has turned into a story that's difficult to comprehend from one of the biggest and most positive battery narratives in the UK to a basket case. Strong words. Mm. As the saga at British Vault continues, more comedies of errors play out at number 10. He's off Rishi Sunak's Christmas card list. (laughs) And right now we need real leadership, get this, rather than a squabble to grab fringe votes. What's actually happening here? Look, I have no reason to think that Recharge aren't going to come up with the money. So Mm. let's just... I have no reason to think that this factory isn't going to be built. But, 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 even though Tata just invested in a new gigafactory Mm. um, in Bridgewater, in in Somerset, near to the Hinkley PowerPoint, we were reporting that just Mm. a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? The government had to come up with, you know, tens of billions of pounds in subsidy uh, for that. Mm. And there is a growing sense among investors, whisper it, is this electric vehicle revolution really all it's cracked up to be? Should we be putting lots of money into this? Will the deadline of 2030, before we get the ban on new petrol and diesel cars, will that actually stick? Mm -hmm. Will it, to coin a phrase, hold the road politically? Or will it slip to 2035? Will other technologies come to the fore? Hydrogen technology, for instance. Will the national grid be able to cope with all these? Because don't we need vehicles? more gigafactories if we're going to to make that target? That's the idea. Mm. We, yeah. need, we need like five or ten near. gigafactories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Way got off. one. We got one that works at the moment in the northeast, right? Owned by the Chinese, mm. right? We got another one apparently that's going to happen in the West Country, owned by Tata or mostly mm. owned by Tata, of course are from India. Mm. We've got this other one up in the northeast at Camis, mm. which is which is which is a site, but only mm. one physically exists at the moment. And we've got and we've got obfuscation in government, unclear direction, whereas the EU and the US are going hell for leather for this stuff. They are the e- well, they are, but on the other hand, the EU, driven by the German car industry, massively influential across mm. the world 
and in the EU, they've pushed the deadline for banning new petrol and diesel cars back to 2035. Interesting. And yet they've still got the investment. Now, I asked the Prime Minister about this specifically when I interviewed him last week, and he said 2030 is our target, mm. 2030 is the policy, it's going to stay the policy. I don't buy it. It's going to slip. Mm. It's going to have to slip because logistically, we're just not there. Mm. Really, really interesting stuff, Liam. Thank you so much for bringing us that and indeed your expertise in this area, having visited the site uh, not that long ago.